you everybody for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little black subscribe button at the bottom of your screen, go ahead, click that black subscribe button really does help our audience grow. really does help our channel grow really does help and mean more than you could possibly know. So go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button. Also, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook and the Betfred Sportsbook app. Bet 50 on any game, get 250 in free bets. Thank you again to Betfred. Thank you again to you. Now, here is the video that you came here for. Switch gears and talk about some of the other results from across college hoops this weekend. Uh, and let's start with what I would argue is maybe the most interesting result of the weekend. I don't know if it's the biggest result, but it's certainly the most interesting and it came from beautiful Rupp Arena, where 10th-ranked Tennessee walked into Rupp Arena, a, a four-point favorite in the Betfred Sportsbook. This, of course, fresh off of a win against the number one-ranked team in the country, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Tennessee coming in with momentum. Tennessee coming in as a four-point favorite in the Betfred Sportsbook. And they walked out with an absolute butt-kicking. Final score in this one, Kentucky 66, Tennessee 54. And let me just say this. You talk about a heck of a week for Kentucky basketball. You know you had a good week when this happens. When you play two games, but you pick up three quad one wins. So quad one, of course, is the most important, most high-profile wins in college basketball, according to the net ranking. That is the ranking that the NCAA uses to put teams into the field and seed them when they get there. Well, Kentucky played two games and picked up three quad three wins, because their win at Mississippi State on Wednesday was a quad one win. I think I said quad three wins. Quad one win. Three quad one wins, okay? At Mississippi State, they beat Tennessee at home. And also, their win earlier in the year against Texas A&M, as Texas A&M continues to play really well in SEC play, that Texas A&M win now moved, moved into the quad one territory. So three quad one wins with the victories this week. Kentucky is now officially off the bubble very comfortably into the NCAA tournament. And let me just say this. Kentucky, it looks like, is going to get in, just like I told you they were going to all season long, by the way. And if they get in, tell me why this isn't a team that other teams shouldn't be very afraid to see in their bracket. Now, let's get, for, for, first of all, before we get into the big picture with Kentucky, small picture, I think you could argue this was their best effort. Listen, I know that they won in Knoxville a few weeks ago. That was a weird game, low scoring, a million fouls. Tennessee missed a bunch of layups, all that good stuff. This was a butt kicking from start to finish. Kentucky was up 39 to 19 at halftime. It got a little bit interesting kind of midway through the second half, but then Kentucky ran away with it. They ran away with it because I believe this was their best effort of the season. One, the defense was there. I know Tennessee isn't exactly the Harlem Globetrotters or the uh, you know the uh, Golden State Warriors when it comes to offensive efficiency, but whenever you hold any team to 54 points on 37% shooting from the field, and oh, by the way, 22% shooting from three, you did a pretty good job. That is what Kentucky did. Great on defense was one of their best defensive efforts of the year. I also thought they did a great job of matching Tennessee's toughness. Listen, we just saw what Tennessee did to Alabama the other day. Now, Alabama fans would say maybe some of it was the refs, but regardless, Tennessee wants to out-tough you. They want to beat you up. They want to get in your head. We saw the quotes from Oscar Shibway after the game. Euros Plavich was apparently saying, I'm your daddy, I'm your baby daddy, whatever he was saying. They want to get in your head. They want to be physical. They want to beat you up. Well, Kentucky was plus eight on the boards. And most importantly, what I would say is this. I think Kentucky has dealt with a lot of injuries, which we'll get into in a minute. But as the last wave of injuries has happened, it has allowed the bench to shorten and it has allowed other players to step up. So why did they win this game? Great on defense, more tough. They're also getting great production from places that they didn't before. I think the player that's really emerged over the last three, four games is Chris Livingston, the freshman from Akron, Ohio. 12 points on Saturday against Tennessee, 13 in the win against Mississippi State. And when you start getting production from him, on top of Case and Wallace, on top of Oscar Shibwe, that is a really dangerous team. Speaking of dangerous, I'm just going to say it again. Tell me why this team can't get into the tournament, won't get into the tournament, and won't strike fear in people when they get there. Now, let me say this before I keep going, because a lot of people are going to say, well, Torres, you flip-flop, and you say you like Kentucky, and then you say you hate Kentucky. Well, thankfully, you guys and girls are listeners of this show, and you know what I've said about Kentucky all along. 
I've had two definitive stances on Kentucky. One, I said in mid-January after the Vanderbilt game, when Kentucky won at Vanderbilt, I said, I'm never calling for John Calipari's job again. Now, I did it earlier in the year when they lost to UCLA. But I said, I'm never calling for John Calipari's job again because I he's just, there's no guarantee. Every year he has you in the hunt. And you can like him, you can hate him. Should you be doing more? Should it take you until January or February to figure it out? But there's no other coach in college basketball that guarantees you to be in the hunt every year like John Calipari. So one, I said, I'm never calling for his job again. And two, what I also said was I never wavered that I believe this team was going to make the NCAA tournament, okay? I said it after the South Carolina loss. I said it after the Georgia loss. I said, as long as they can withstand these injuries, they're going to be okay. Well, now they've withstood these injuries, and that's why I think this team can be so dangerous. One, as I said, as the injuries have happened, it has allowed their rotation to kind of tighten up, get good players in confident positions where they're not looking over their shoulders, wondering if Calipari is going to pull them, They're just going out and playing and being more confident. But two, the reason that I'm starting to like this team, listen, we all get caught up in the moment of Kentucky basketball. When you win, what does it mean? When you lose, what does it mean? I also think that like, we probably don't appreciate everything that this team has gone through throughout the year. Think about everything this team has gone through throughout the year. Oscar Shibway undergoes surgery. People forget this. He had surgery like a month before the season. Didn't practice in the lead up to the season. Basically, his first real action was in the season opener against Michigan State. Cason Wallace, their best player, has dealt with back injuries in and out of the lineup. Spasms in, out, this, that, the other thing. Jacob Toppin missed a few games. Oh, by the way, Severe Wheeler and C.J. Frederick, three, you know, three, four games ago against Georgia, just out of nowhere, not out of nowhere, but they weren't available. And so you look at this Kentucky team, I'm not saying that John Calipari needs to be absolved and that he couldn't do a better job and that they shouldn't have beaten South Carolina. Some of the lineups could have been better earlier. But that's all. I mean, I, I literally just mentioned five guys that have been starting players for this team. They miss time. It's going to happen. You're going to struggle. You're going to struggle to get in a groove. Think about some of the other teams that have struggled in college basketball this year. First of all, Tennessee was missing two starters on Saturday. You could crush Rick Barnes and he's not the guy and they're not going to do well in March. They were down two of their most important players. Arkansas this year, preseason top five team, according to most people, including myself. Well, you lose Nick Smith, then you get him back, then you lose him again. Now you have him back. It's going to be an adjustment period. Also, Trevin Brazil, another first rounder. You lose him. It's going to be an adjustment period. Creighton, no Ryan Kalkbrenner. Shocking. An All-American center doesn't play. They go 0-4 without him. That's not surprising. And it's the same with Kentucky. Everything they've been through, I think this now puts them in position to be in a great position going forward because one, they got their guys. Two, I'd also say this. If you can dominate Tennessee defensively and you can beat Tennessee twice, you can win at Mississippi State, you're you're tough, you're mentally tough, you can win in tough environments. I also think you're built to beat just about anybody in college basketball this year because I think that's the important part is right now, if Kentucky just takes care of business, their final four games are at Florida this week, then Auburn, then Vanderbilt, then at Arkansas to end the season two Saturdays from now. But if you just take care of business and you do what you need to do to get in, I'm not sure that it matters. Are you a two or, or two seed? Are you a nine seed here? Are you a seven seed there? Are you an 11 seed there? Just get into the freaking dance. Because if you do, I'm going to ask you a simple question. How many, are, how many teams are going to have a guard the caliber of Cason Walls? How many teams are going to have a low post presence the, like Oscar Shibwe? Now, there are some, but there aren't very many, especially who you're going to be playing early in the tournament. And so I look at this Kentucky team, and I sit there and say, let's look across college basketball. Who do you think they can't beat? Because I'll tell you this. If they play Purdue, Purdue's going to be a number one seed. They're going to be better on, at four positions on the court than Purdue. Center. Shibwe versus Edie. I'd give advantage to Edie. I'm not going to lie. Edie's seven foot four. Shibwe's six foot eight. You know, I'm not great at math, but what is that? Seven inches, six inches that Zach Edie's given up to, to Oscar Shibwe? So, yeah, I think Oscar Shibwe would probably be at a disadvantage, but Kentucky would be better at four other spots. Kansas is in line to get a number one seed. Kentucky easily could have beaten Kansas earlier this year. UCLA's in position to get a two seed. Kentucky wasn't very good, and they still played tough with UCLA. So you go on and on down the list. I think there are teams that give them matchup problems. 
Alabama's one, maybe Baylor, but there aren't that many. Who knows if you'll play them and where are you going to play them? In the Sweet 16, in the Elite Eight, in the Final Four? So all I'm saying, the only point I'm trying to make, if you're Kentucky, just get to the NCAA tournament because I actually think you'll be pretty good once you get there. 